you guys wanted to see this big boys power supply in action and have a detailed look at all the knobs and buttons on it so we're going to do that uh, today and uh, we'll run through it bit by bit and see what you think now some of you know that this was built for a hydron project which it, this is a prototype and it will bust up with a bit of luck water molecules into their primary components hydrogen and oxygen now my biggest problem is trying to get a quarter of a million volts out of a plug socket. Uh, now there's some clues because we know high voltage produces ozone or O3 which is extremely interesting. The reactor is still being built. This comes down to time and money which is a bit of a pain. But you'll be able to see this running uh, and hopefully uh, it's what you want. So we'll have a go. Right, well there's the spare transformer in the bottom, which is also very good because it provides a little bit of weight to stop the thing falling over. That is adjustable, that top. I can slide it backwards and forwards just to make it easier and more comfortable to use. These are all the buttons. And the main control is done by this variac. And this unit will feed the primary of some transformers, which will then boost it up a 1000 to 1 ratio to get 300 kV. Um, I probably only need 200 kV, but you know, this is a big boy's power supply. There's nothing better than over engineering something. This thing, I don't think I could destroy even if I tried. So, we're gonna power it up so you can see it all working. All right, there's our main switch. You want some of that? All right, you might just make that light out there. The incoming mains is present. But the stop button is now released. So we've got two lights on. Now we've got a little key switch here. Yeah? Turn the old key and we're ready. You probably won't be able to see them lights on, but they are on. Now we've got these are our power buttons, that's 250 watts. Yeah? So there's two of those. There's two 400s, a 700 a thousand and auxiliary that's the interesting button because we can have whatever we like up to 10 kilowatts um, it's something that I don't need but you know if you're going to design something again it's better to have plenty there than not enough so say I wanted a maximum power of 250 watts which isn't a great deal yeah select that and there's a high voltage switch simple as that Alright, it's got the alarm on this to warn us, so I want some of that. Alright, so it's ready. Now, we're ready. So all I have to do, this variant, right, will raise the volts to whatever we want. It's a thousand to one ratio, so there will be 100 kV. Yeah, that'd be 150 kV, 200 kV, 250 kV, and I'm probably at the moment raise it to 270 kV. And of course, that will be coming out of there. So there we've got basic voltage controls. Obviously, if I want more power, that will give me 500 watts and so on. This auxiliary one. That's the interesting one. See, the fan comes on in anticipation of doing some work. But it's, uh, as I say, it's unlikely I'll ever need that amount of power. With all them on, it's about 3 kilowatts. Now, I know you want to know what these do as well. This reactor needs a few bits and pieces to run it. So it needs a primary compressor to blast the water in the extreme velocity. Alright, at the moment I've just got dummy loads down there. There's two motorised pumps, or one pump, one vacuum cleaner and an allergen light. And by turning this... I can select a level that we want. Yeah? And it's lockable.
And then there's a turbo fan, which is controlled by this one. Same thing. Yeah? And finally, the vaporizer control, which is this third one. You won't hear anything there because there's a halogen light doing some work. As I turn it up, you can see it increase. That will vaporize the gases to a controllable level. So you've got to think about these things being like a carburetor on a car. You've got to get the mix just right. And then we should get some interesting gases. Obviously, this is the ignition button. Once we're getting our gas come out, and the gas jet, by the way, is four inches in diameter. So the flame is going to be something like what's coming out of a hot air balloon burner. And once we've got flames, um, well, once we've got gas, hopefully we'll get ignition and uh, a usable heat output. There's a couple more buttons here. I've got a, that's just a solenoid valve. There's a remote control and the gas detection system so hopefully there you know what all these buttons are for at the front anyway we'll have a quick peek round the back right this is the back of the unit obviously we've got all the uh, sockets and fuses there for the different functions um, that's where our gas detection system plugs in uh, we've got an auxiliary input there's the main output and one on the end is the input and there's the air operated remote switch there and well I think we ought to power this thing up and have some fun eh? Right that squeak you quite often hear that's me going silly on this, listen Alright so if I set that there I've cranked it up a bit now when I squeeze this remote switch Right, this is the switch. Yeah, I'll get a warning. I'll squeeze it gently. Alright, let's have some lights over there. Alright, that's, that's a warning. I squeeze it again. I've got voltage. And if I squeeze it a bit more, I get ignition. That's simple as that. It, all that is, is this, the other end of this switch, is, as I said before, it's a washing machine pressure switch. It's got three different settings on it, or levels. Now it's brilliant for high voltage. Very safe. Here's our high voltage transformers, 1000 to 1 ratio. So if I put 200 volts in there, I'll get 200,000 come out the top there. These arc horns just protect from over voltage. If I do want more voltage, uh, these are on a thread so I can undo those to adjust the gap slightly or I can simply move these away like that just to increase the gap and that will raise the volts even more um, obviously the closest gap is this across there so I have to put a barrier in there just so I can increase the volts more than 200 kV and I've just put that perspex barrier there so the voltage can't jump across those two it has to go the long way round which is even more voltage it's quite crude but it's, it's effective and it is a prototype so they're the, the boxes and as I say that was a difficult bit trying to get 200,000 volts or more out of a plug socket and I can put uh, some different power in it and we're going to see what the output's like and then we're going to bust something See, it's definitely with these sort of sparks that produces more ozone than this. That is not producing ozone. So, as I say, to get our reaction, we really only need one or two amps from the mains. That's the type of spark which is quite vicious. Um, so hopefully it will do uh, what we want it to do.
I think that's probably about it. There's nothing really more. Although I'll probably upload this and think oh, I should have uh, done this, this and this. But we've had a little look. Now I think we'll see what the uh, breakdown voltage is going to be of that fish tank. It should be an insulator, but uh, every material has a breakdown voltage at some point. It will collapse and it will start to conduct. Thank you.